Alright, so we went over all the intermolecular forces and what they do, how they work, but now we're going to be applying them. What, what's the point of intermolecular forces? What, they did, what do they do? Why are they teaching you it in chemistry? You know, why do you have to take tests on it? So, remember, intermolecular forces are between different molecules. So, let's say we have different molecules such as, uh, well, let's that's a molecule, not an atom. That's a whole molecule. Here's another molecule. Here's another one. 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 So intermolecular forces will be the types of bonds in between different molecules. So we'll say, you know, this is just a big tub of molecules. They're all having some sort of intermolecular forces with each other. Attraction and repulsion. Now, everybody knows what a solid, liquid, and gas is. And the differences between a solid, liquid, and gas is not the, not what the uh, molecules are, but basically the spacing between them. So, if we were to compare a solid, the spacing between molecules would be pretty close. We'll say it's that close. Alright, if we were going to say a liquid, the spacing between them would be a little bit further. And then if we we're going to say a gas, oh man, I don't know if I have room, but the spacing between molecules in the gas phase would be a lot further apart. I probably don't even have enough room to really clearly show uh, an illustration of it. So, if we're going to go from Say we have a solid, solid water, ice. They're close together. And then, no, actually, water's not a good example. Okay, let's say we, we had something else. Um, carbon dioxide. Okay, so we have solid carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice. The, the molecules would be this close together. And then it was to melt, it would spread this far apart. Actually, carbon dioxide is not a good example either. But anyways, the point is... To go from a solid, the distance is pretty close, and then if we're going to move to a liquid, all that happens is that the molecules move further apart from each other, and then to go from a liquid to a gas, they move even further from each other. So, we have to separate the molecules in order, and remember, what's going on between the molecules? Intermolecular forces. So, we have a lot of intermolecular forces, the strongest intermolecular forces there are, Pulling these two molecules apart is going to be a lot harder. It's going to take more energy. And for this case, when we say energy, we mean temperature. So, if we, if we were to compare something that had a lot of intermolecular forces holding all of the, all of the atoms together, or all of the molecules together, then in order to pull them apart it would take more energy or higher temperature as opposed to something that doesn't have a lot of intermolecular forces say it only has dispersion forces then pulling apart will be relatively easy meaning it will take a low temperature in order to separate them meaning to go from a solid to a liquid or to melt it and same thing going from a liquid to a gas so for an example Okay, so I went ahead and drew this out while I was paused so you guys didn't have to sit here and watch me draw this. But here I have four different examples, and these are really simple examples because out of those three forces that I listed above, dispersion, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding, these four molecules are only dispersion, only dispersion forces. So if you remember from the previous video, disper every molecule or substance out there has dispersion forces and the strength of the dispersion force increases with molecular weight. So increasing the molecular weight we increase the dispersion force and if we increase the attraction or the for intermolecular force we'll increase how the strength that's holding the molecules together and therefore it'll take more energy to separate them. So you know, maybe I should write that out instead of just saying it. Okay so um, higher molecular weight equals stronger or higher dispersion 
force G force that sounds pretty cool which means which will mean so higher dispersion force which will mean a higher and in this case we're talking about melting point okay so the MP right here stands for melting point so if we look at these fluorine which is at the top of the group with its molecular weight is 38 grams per mole and its melting point is negative 220 degrees Celsius alright and then if we look at chlorine it gets heavier so if it gets heavier higher molecular weight the dispersion force or the D force nobody say that to the professor say dispersion force the dispersion force increases and therefore the uh, the melting point increases and the reason is because the force holding the molecules of the chlorine together is stronger so in order to separate it you're going to need a higher temperature so when we're talking about separation in this case we're talking about melting which is going from a solid to a liquid okay so we're trying to take these molecules from a solid to a liquid we gotta separate them and the chlorine has a higher molecular weight so therefore its dispersion force is higher so therefore we gotta, we gotta put more energy to separate it so the melting point the temperature is going to be higher and then we take it even a step further bromine has a molecular weight of 160 grams per mole alright so that's even higher than chlorine so higher molecular weight higher dispersion force higher melting point as you can see the melting point is increasing we're in the negatives right now so don't get confused by that and then iodine which is really heavy you increase the molecular weight increase the forces holding all of the all of the iodine together and therefore the melting point is even higher it's a hundred and hundred and thirteen point five so that's above room temperature so right now iodine is a uh, solid alright so I added even more information I added the boiling point. So the boiling point will follow the same trend. Once again, fluorine has a boiling point of negative 188 degrees Celsius. So right now at room temperature, fluorine is a gas because, because of how weak the dispersion forces are between it. And then we go to chlorine, which increases the molecular weight, increase the molecular weight, increase the dispersion force. Therefore, oh, that was melting point. But the same thing applies it will increase the boiling point as well so BP's boiling point so it will increase the boiling point so it goes from negative 188 to negative 34.6 and then bromine increase the molecular weight and then look at the boiling point it got even higher 58.78 and then iodine is 184.35 so if we were to look at all of these at room temperature, I probably should have wrote this out before, fluorine is going to be a gas. Chlorine is going to be a gas. Bromine is a liquid. And iodine is a solid. And we know why now. Exactly why. Because of the dispersion force. See, gas, meaning the fluorine and chlorine, are a lot further apart they're just they're very separated and the reason why they're separated is because their dispersion force or their, their intermolecular force is a lot weaker than the other two bromine on the other hand has a higher molecular weight so its dispersion force will be a, a little bit stronger so at room temperature the, the intermolecular forces are able to hold the bromine close enough to form a liquid but not close enough for a solid and then iodine its molecular weight is at the top it's because its molecular weight is higher, its dispersion force is higher, and it's able, it's a lot stronger, and it's able to hold the molecules together and stay in a solid at room temperature. Alright, so that was a simple case with just dispersion force. Let's bump it up a level. Alright, so once again, I was nice to you guys. I paused it and I wrote all this out so you can just jump straight to it. So we're going to compare these two. Fluorine and... And o, the melting point and boiling point of these two. So if we look at the molecular weight, fluorine is a lot heavier than the NO. So, so you would assume that the fluorine is going to have a stronger dispersion force and therefore hold itself together a lot strong, like a lot tighter 
than the nitric oxide. But, if you look at this, the nitric oxide actually has a higher melting point and boiling point than the fluorine. So this doesn't, you know, I know what you're thinking, Josh, this isn't following the trend that you went over before, but we're in Chem 2 now, right? So we should know that the, if we would draw it out, the Lewis structure of nitrogen, or nitric oxide, you come to something like this, and, well, you already took Chem 1, so you guys should know what's going on with this. So you look at that, and you all, you immediately know that this is a polar compound. It has an overall dipole moment going, whoop, wrong way, going in this direction right here. Okay, so if it has a dipole moment, therefore it does not only have dispersion force, it has dipole-dipole forces. So fluorine only has dispersion forces holding together, but the nitric oxide, on the other hand, also has dipole-dipole and dispersion force. So it has two different intermolecular forces holding it together, uh, making the, the bond, the intermolecular bond between the molecules a lot stronger. So therefore it's able to hold itself tighter with each other and have a higher, it's, it takes more energy to separate them from a solid to a liquid and then also from a liquid to a gas. So you have to take everything into all the intermolecular forces into consideration when you're trying to figure out which molecule is going to have a higher boiling point or higher melting point or lower melting point and boiling point. Alright, so last example. We're going to compare nitric oxide and methanol. So we know nitric oxide has dispersion because everything has dispersion and also has dipole, dipole forces. And then the methanol has dispersion because everything has dispersion and it also has, if we drew out the Lewis structure, it also has, uh, you know, I know there's going to be somebody out there that's going to wish I would have drawn it out so they could see. So I'll do it real quick. Okay. So, oh my god, that was ugly. Alright, there we go. Those are lone pairs. Whoop, oh, got that. Okay, so there's a Lewis structure, so we can definitely tell that it has an overall dipole moment. And for the guy out there who wants me to actually draw it, uh, the overall one will be looking sort of going like that, towards the negative oxygen. All right, so once again, dispersion, dispersion, dipole, dipole. So it all. So if we look at the molecular weight, the that will tell you how strong the, the dispersion force is because it's based on molecular weight and they're pretty similar but if we look at the melting points they're way way different this is negative 164 and negative 94 and then negative 152 and 65 so this methanol has a lot higher melting point and boiling point so there has to be another force coming into play so if you remember from the previous video you should remember the hydrogen bonding which is going to be the requirements is you need a hydrogen attached to an oxygen nitrogen and fluorine and another electronegative atom on the other molecule okay so if we look at this the methanol has an oxygen attached to the hydrogen and uh, the other electronegative atom will be the oxygen because you got a millions thousands of these molecules floating around so this hydrogen will hydrogen bond with the oxygen of another compound so this has also has hydrogen bonding which is one of the strongest intermolecular forces so that's why you can this makes sense now this does not have hydrogen bonding so its melting point in comparison to something that does have hydrogen bonding is going to be a lot lower and this is going to be a lot higher so if we were to look at these at room temperature it looks like this is going to be a gas and this is going to be a liquid and that's because of all the intermolecular forces holding it together so that concludes the intermolecular forces and why you're learning these for chemistries if you have any example problems that you'd like me to work out and post a video just send it my way and I'll do it whenever I get the chance